But Einstein's most famous equation, E equals mc squared. We had an Einstein's equation pretty recently in relation to something else. Einstein's photoelectric effect, or Einstein's equation describing the photoelectric effect. This one is much more famous. It's probably the only equation that any non-scientist is ever going to know. E equals mc squared. What does the E stand for? Uh, speed of light. So what he is saying here is that, like I said, we've never come across this. If you've read it, you've probably read it yourselves. I haven't covered it. What he's suggesting here is that mass, that there is a relationship between mass and energy, and that they're sort of the same thing because E equals mass. Now, we've never had energy being equal mass. The unit of energy is what? The unit of mass? Okay. Now, what he's suggesting is those are kind of the same thing, that one can disappear and become something else. Mass disappears and becomes something else. So if you weigh a product before and after some sort of reaction, Everything up until now suggests, suggests that the total mass before the reaction equals the total mass after the reaction, right? They're just made up of maybe different particles and different atoms. Einstein was the first person to realize that actually some of those atoms will disappear, or even if they don't disappear, they will get lighter, they'll have a smaller mass. But as a result of them getting smaller, they'll have more energy afterwards. And usually the form of energy they would have is kinetic. Now, if somebody's got kinetic energy, what is it doing? It's moving quickly, right? So he's suggesting some of these things might get lighter, but they'll start moving more quickly. But I mean, when I did my old intro search, you had the whole notion of conservation of mass. Stuff doesn't disappear. If you weigh something before reaction and weigh it after, it's going to weigh the same amount. And this is a very basic example of one here. If you look at wherever we have this one here, we do. That's our traditional neutron going into uranium and splitting up into two small particles. So if you weigh that and weigh these, you should find that the total mass after equals the total mass before, because stuff doesn't just disappear. That's what everybody understood. When they actually did experiments on this, and, and well, I suppose they weren't able to me measure the mass, they certainly would have had the theory before this. When they tried to measure the mass of these things, in fact, I think it was the two, uh, one of the Irish guys was responsible for this. He looked at it, and he was able to verify that, yes, some of the mass did disappear, and yes, it did become kinetic energy. So we move that on, just to see what's going on down here. This guy. That's my neutron hitting the uranium, and that's the two kryptonite particles, the krypton plus the barium plus the whatever three neutrons were being produced, the neutron that went in plus two more, right? The total mass before should equal the total mass after, but in this case, which one is heavier? On the left. And therefore, that was the, the beginning before. of the end of the reaction? Before. That was the beginning of the reaction. So as a result of the reaction, there seems to be the same amount of protons as neutrons. Remember there was when we did a reaction for uranium fission, we looked at it in the beginning of our notes, we had exactly the same number of protons and neutrons before as after. And yet, lo and behold, somehow or other, after seems to be light. So some of the mass has disappeared. And that in itself was a pretty crazy notion. And I would have thought that if anything, that's what Einstein should have got the Nobel Prize for. I mean, he did work on special relativity, he did work on general relativity, and he did this, which was almost something else again. What did he win the Nobel Prize for? The photoelectric. The Was it the photoelectric effect? Yeah, it was the photoelectric effect. Yeah, it was in 1905, I think it was. Or else the paper was produced in 1905. Right? So, so here we go again. You've got a neutron crashing into uranium, produces these two, what we call fission products, or daughter products, is what they're sometimes known as, and other neutrons, and it's these other neutrons that now crash into other uranium particles. One of the guys who proved Einstein was right was Irish, and he won a Nobel Prize. And you have got to know his name. Uh, the guy's name was Ernest Walton. Uh, his grandson, I finished before I was actually in the school here, uh, just a couple years ahead of you. And here's Einstein, this is the first time I've ever heard this, most people never knew this thing existed, where Einstein actually acknowledged the work of Walton and another English physicist called Cockcroft, the two of them worked together. And in, when we do the next chapter, which is particle physics, we have to see in detail what was their experiment. But here's Einstein, it's loud, the quality isn't very good, and you can kind of read it here, but it's the first time I've ever come across him paying tribute to somebody else, a two, in this case, to Walton. This mass and energy are old. Our first different manifestation, people are demonstrated by Coca and Walton in 1932 experiment. Right. So he did his work well before then, but it took 1932 before these guys were actually able to say, actually, Einstein was right, he does even in C squared. 
at that stage, people were coming around to accept it. But it was one of the reasons that experiment, Cockcroft and Walls, was so famous, was because it verified Einstein's equation. Right? So as before, you look at the mass before reaction, you look at the mass after the reaction, and you find that the total mass before is less than the total mass after. Now, from the first page of our notes on this chapter, what was the equation we had for uranium hitting a neutron hitting uranium? You had a neutron, it went into uranium. How was produced afterwards? Kr. Barium plus. Kr. And what else? N2. Plus N1. Two neutrons. Two N1. Right, let's stop putting numbers on these. What's my neutron? One. One on top or bottom? Bottom. Okay, it really makes no odds once you're consistent the whole way through it. Uranium? Two, three, five. On um, bottom. 90. 90. 90. 90. 90. 90. 90. 90. 90. 90. 90. 90. So you add these up and you find the bottom number corresponds. You've got the same number of protons plus neutrons before and after. Excuse me. You've got the same number of protons before and And yet the mass has disappeared. Now the question you're going to have to do, and it's a very, very common question in Leibniz physics, is to find out what was the kinetic energy with which these guys moved off afterwards. Assuming that there was almost no kinetic energy to begin with. And to do that you say, well, okay, if there was no energy there to begin with, and there was energy afterwards, the only way they could have got energy was as a result of the mass disappearing. So what you've got to figure out is how much mass disappeared. So the question basically is, you work out the mass of these two guys, and then you work out the mass of these four guys, one, two, three, four. You take that away from that, and you get, a, let's say, a missing mass. When normally the missing mass is a millionth of a gram or something like that, or a millionth of a millionth of a gram. Let's say the missing mass was one kilogram. How would I find out how much energy that corresponds to? You'd use E, I'm looking for the energy, so it's equal to m by c squared. So it's equal to 1 kilogram. What's c? 3 by 10 to the 8. If you square that, what do you get? 3 by 10 is 16. Yeah, you've got to square this bit, and you've got to square this bit. So it's 9 by 10 to the power, and if you 10 to the 8 squared, it becomes, as you said, 6. 10 to the power 16. Units? Um, two. So E equals 1 by 9 by 10 to the power of 16. And 1 by 9 by 10 to the power of 16 is 9 by 10 to the power of 16 joules, which is an incredible amount of energy. Now it turns out the from 1 kilogram. Now normally not 1 kilogram disappeared. In fact, the atomic bomb in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, these were fission reactions, so it was something like this that happened. But the amount of mass that disappeared was probably the amount of mass that contained maybe 1 potato or something about the size of your hand. So all that explosive power, some mass did disappear. In fact, at the very most, it was that of, I can't remember, it was either a couple of grams or a couple of hundred grams. But either way, something not more than the, basically the mass of your fist. So if you weigh the total mass before the reaction, the total mass after, the only difference would have been a couple of hundred grams. Right? Uh, so if the one kilogram disappears, you get that amount of juice. He said in practice, that doesn't always happen. But that would be the equivalent. Now, how does that manifest itself here? Now, when you say energy appears, energy, what does that mean? Where does the energy go? Or where is the energy? Associated with? The barium. And these three guys here. So basically, these guys start moving off with kinetic energies where there was no kinetic energy. Right? So it's a very common exam question. So we're going to do lots of those maths questions. Now, the only thing that's going to make it a little bit more difficult is they will give you masses, not in kilograms, but in terms of, what do we have? For very, very small masses? AMU. AMU, atomic mass units. So they'll give it to you in atomic mass units. So you have two options. You can convert each of these masses to kilograms before you start. Or alternatively, you can find the missing mass. in it. You can leave it in atomic mass units the whole way through. You find your missing mass in atomic mass units. But then before you use E equals mc squared, that m assumes that the mass is in what? Kilograms. Kilograms. So if you leave everything in atomic mass units to begin with, before you use this equation, you've got to convert back to go from atomic units into kilograms. And again, the question will tell you how to convert from one to the other. Right? So we'll do a couple of sample questions of those now, and then we'll let you finish up with a couple of
Okay, thank you.